Sheila turned this image from Manhattan into a painting, stressing the clean planes of the buildings and the pattern of the city in strong light. His photographs bred his paintings. They acted as ideas for further stages of abstraction. After the Armoury show, American modernists tended to define themselves in terms of the new city and the machine, partly because, in the eyes of Europeans, that was the unique side of American culture. But Sheila took this to an extreme. For him, the industrial sublime replaced the natural sublime. And since any tendency in art worth its salt was expected to become an ism, Sheila called his precisionism. Precisionism indicated both style and subject. In fact, the subject was the style. Exact, hard, flat, big, industrial, and full of references to photography. Photography fed into painting and vice versa. Anything live and organic, like trees or people, was kept out of it, and there was no such thing as a precisionist pussycat. The ideal precisionist site was something like this, and yet it was a deeply romantic movement, adoring the good machine, the clean-cut primary forms of technological America. The man who builds a factory builds a temple. The man who works there worships there. Nothing symbolized this bizarre piety of American capitalism better than River Rouge. The capital of Henry Ford's automotive empire was now the biggest industrial plant in the world. Ford viewed industry as the new American religion. He thought it would lead to a United States of the world with himself as an industrial messiah the complete anti-humanist. Men could be treated like machinery. The defective human body could be fixed with new interchangeable parts. Machinery, he wrote, is accomplishing in the world what man has failed to do by preaching propaganda or the written word. The Ford Motor Company hired Sheila to spend six weeks in River Rouge taking official photographs that reflect this fantasy of the machine as cult object. Tiny workers serve enormous clean machines like this stamping press. There is no hint of the boring, dehumanizing and sometimes dangerous nature of production line work. The managerial elite had found its ideal artist in Sheila. His crisscrossing conveyor belts at River Rouge match the buttresses of Chartres Cathedral, which he photographed two years later. In a panorama of River Rouge called American Landscape, which he painted in 1930, the factory is all. And man is a single lonely ant. Was he commenting on the crash of 29, in whose wake Ford ruthlessly cut wages, fired armies of workers, and fixed machine guns at the gates? Among the rain and lights, I saw the figure five in gold on a red fire truck, moving tents, unheeded, to gong clangs, siren howls and wheels rumbling through the dark city. DeMuth's most famous picture, done in 1928, was a precursor of pop art, a big glittering numeral, a sign for its own sake, called I saw the figure five in gold. It was inspired by an imagist poem by his friend William Carlos Williams. DeMuth puts in the street lights, the red back of the truck and the engine company number five receding down the street. <laughs> 